Now everything else on this Cox 2 is kind of a me too Cox 2. It's I want some of the money that Remondale is making, so I'm going to make a Cox 2 selective. And most of them are good products. I don't have any pros and cons particularly. Uh, just point them out. Edelac is edegesic. It's, it's a good product once a day, chronically. Deramax, Deracoxib <coughs> also. Now, it has nonlinear kinetics, meaning increasing doses give you longer half-lives, all right? So it's a little bit more prone to toxicities if it's overdosed. But if used properly, it's okay. It does seem like maybe we've seen a few more GI ulcers with Deracoxib than we have with um, carprofen, but it's, it's hard to say. Now, meloxicam is kind of interesting because uh, here we, we cross over into both dog and cat, Medicam. Okay. It's available in the U.S. as an injectable, as an oral suspension, not a tablet, interestingly. Injectable oral suspension and now a transmucosal spray. So that's kind of neat because you don't have to make the dog swallow anything. You can just spray it on his gums and uh, off you go. It's COX-2 selective in the dog uh, and it's approved in the U.S. and Canada. Now, in the cat, the only thing approved is a single dose injection. One dose injected in the cat is approved in the U.S. All right. But we have problems in kitty cats because up till now, what do we got? We got aspirin that doesn't really work for, for bad pain and we've got peroxicam which has to be compounded and is pretty ulcerogenic. <clears throat> so um, people started looking at uh, meloxicam in cats, okay? So they started using meloxicam in these cats that did need longer term pain relief, all right? And they started showing kidney failures, all right? So the FDA came out and this is one of the few drugs that carries what we call a black box warning. And a black box <coughs> warning is basically a black box on the bottle, on the, on the uh, not the bottle, on the, uh, on the box that, that in big black letters it says, you know, don't be stupid and do this, you know, you follow the directions. So it is specifically warning against repeated use of, uh, of meloxicam in cats. Now, after that occurred, people started paying attention and looking at the kinetics and the dosing and they found out that if you give the proper dose, you can use meloxicam chronically in the cat. So it is uh, very commonly done, all right? Uh, <clears throat> the problem you get into is if you do so in the cat, you're not only going extra labely, you are actually going against the label. You are doing something that the uh, label says specifically not to do. So that's a little awkward. Uh, <laughs> the, um, so, uh, but it is done. A lot of people will use meloxicam chronically in the cat. Now, again, orally, it's a suspension. Um, you give so much, and if it's a small dog, they want you to put it on the food so it's measured out more. And so they have these dispensers for it. Um, if any of you go to Canada, pay attention because the dispenser in Canada puts a different size drop than the dispenser in the U.S. So you actually wind up with giving a different dose if you don't uh, pay attention to which dispenser you're using. All right. So um, good product in the dog, used a lot. The transmucosal is a nice uh, uh, option that we have for meloxicam. Single injection approved in the cat, but used a lot extra labelly chronically despite the, the, the warning. Okay, uh, now uh, cattle. All right, the, this, the species difference things, you know, I'm big on species differences. Cattle have a really long half-life of meloxicam. So 
we stopped using the butte because of all the problems, guess what? We're using a lot of meloxicam extra labeling in cattle now because it's got a long half-life, which just like with the butte means it's a relatively cheap dose to give and we have to give it infrequently, all right, um, long dosing interval. And no aplastic anemia or anything, so um, this is one that you'll see used when you need to treat like, um, uh, well, any painful condition in a cow. It's, it's been looked at mostly relative to castration and uh, telling whether or not addition of an NSAID is beneficial. But you don't want to be running out dosing the, the castrated calf every 12 hours, so you want something that lasts longer and meloxicam uh, meets that criteria. Uh, Ferricoxib, this is a, a dual approved. It's Prevacox in dogs. It's Equox, Equiox in horses. Again, once daily and can be used chronically. Um, used in horses, I, I don't have a lot of experience with it, uh, um, but certainly a, a, a choice. All right, now this one is cats only, Robinococcid, Onsior. All right. Uh, up till not, uh, this came out, the only thing we had approved was a single dose of Medicam. All right, we use aspirin extra labelly, we use paroxicam extra labelly, uh, we use meloxicam when we uh, are told not to. All right, so um, they came out with Onsior. It is a COX-2 selective for cats and it's approved for three days of uh, once daily dosing. All right, and again, the reason is they couldn't find a naturally occurring disease that lasted long enough to test it for pain control beyond that. So it's approved for post-surgical pain. All right, since then, uh, they have done at least one study that showed a month of Onsior was um, effective and safe uh, and I believe they compared it to uh, meloxicam and basically found it equally effective and equally safe. Perhaps a little, um, um, certainly it doesn't carry the big warning, so it might have some advantages. Whether or not we'll wind up using it long term, like ca the cats that need it for months and months at a time, we don't have any data. I suspect it would probably be okay, but we don't have the data yet uh, to say definitively. All right, now, um, just a, a brief note about topicals. All right, the only one out there that you're likely to use is Surpass. It's Diclofenac. It's a topical inset. And uh, when you put it on the joint, on the skin, enough penetrates into the joint, into the joint fluid to provide a benefit. And I know the equine clinicians do use this. They get uh, phlebitis in the jugular vein. They'll, they'll put a surpass on it. They've got a sore hock. They'll put surpass on it, this sort of thing. And it, it does seem to be effective. Um, not enough to systemically cause a problem. Again, the, the influence directly on the site of application. 